Hello and welcome to this Checked Insight video. Today we're going to talk about using camera edge analytics to trigger the bridge into an alarm mode for visual verification. So real quick, the bridge offers three ways to send a signal to a central station. One way is the intrusion system. So I could use any intrusion system, wired or wireless, with any detector, glass break, motion, um, beam, you name it, I can, and I can even do that with or without a, an intrusion panel because the bridge does feature inputs. So I could use beams, motion detectors, glass breaks, door contacts, wired, or through an intrusion panel. It also features the ability to use the analytics on cameras. So if your camera supports uh, high quality analytics like human filtering or human or vehicle filtering, loitering, things like that, I can use those cameras, the analytics that are on that camera to trigger an alarm when people are detected in a certain, in certain instances. And the newest feature for cameras that exist on site or lower cameras or, or lower end cameras that don't feature this high end human detection analytics, you can actually use services like Camec, Iron Yoon and Ava to take existing cameras on site that lack the analytics and overlay analytics on top of them. And these are, all three of these methods are integrated with the bridge and I can use one or a combination of all three to trigger my bridge and have alarms go through. This specific video will go over how to use camera edge analytics and how to program those, how to use them and how to, um, how, to how the bridge can recognize them, how to activate that in the camera and information on that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the checked dealer portal. So this is where I would program my bridge. You can see that I have a few cameras online already. So I have my uh, driveway online. I have my gate, my doorbell. What I'm going to do, I'm going to delete this camera right now. And this is actually the camera we're going to configure. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a camera. So I will show you what it looks like from the start. I will go to the home. You can see I have three cameras added. I'm going to add another one. So I'm going to do an OnVIF network discovery. Looking for a camera on the network. This should take a few seconds. Now I'm going to find the camera I want to connect to. This is my IP address that I want. I'll connect to that. Log in with my username and password. Make sure I'm connected through OnVIF if we're using an OnVIF camera. We do have the site logics and the access APIs. Good to use if, if you'd like to use those. For any other camera, we are going to connect through the OnVIF protocol, or if it's an Optex camera, we will use the Optex protocol but we will normally use the OnVIF protocol. So I'm gonna hit authenticate. It's going to give me a snapshot image, a little thumbnail image to verify that this is the correct camera. Yes, this is the one I wanna use, so I'll hit next. I'll give it a name, this one I call the front door. Um, I'm, for this, we're using an analytic zone, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this zone number as default 902A. Um, if I am using a physical detector, I would type in the zone I wanted here, but I'm just using an analytic zone, so I'm gonna hit next. The, the programming, it will pop up next, and I have a couple of choices, a few choices. I have instant, or what kind of zone I want this to be. It can be instant, entry, exit, follower, 24 hour, and then a couple of custom zones. For my purpose, I'm gonna choose instant. And then my alarm trigger source, I have digitally input normally closed or open. Those are gonna be the physical inputs on the bridge. And then I have the OnVIF analytic trigger. Because I intend for this to be an OnVIF triggered or analytic triggered camera on the edge, I'm gonna use this. I'll hit next. Now the bridge is gonna go into a seven step process. I'm not gonna make you wait through this. So we're gonna go ahead and fast forward. But what will happen is it's gonna go through these seven steps. And if something doesn't go right during the seven steps, it will let you know what went wrong and you can get that address. So we're gonna hit done and let it, we're gonna, we're gonna pause the video here and start back up when it's done. 
Okay, so a few minutes have passed and now the camera has fully been, as we would call it, mounting. It is fully added into the bridge. You can see results. Everything's green. I don't have any red. Again, if you see red here, you can open up the tabs and find out what's wrong and address that. Reach, reach out to tech support. But usually, if you're using OnVIF, you shouldn't run, encounter any issues. Sometimes you will. OnVIF isn't, a, it isn't always going to be smooth, but the mass, vast majority of times it will be. So you can see we have the frame rate that we need. We have the resolution we need. That looks good. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to close that out. I'm going to go into the camera's menu. It's, it's settings for this particular camera, which is a gear icon on that camera. So I'll click that. And I'm going to go into alarm, right? I have on this set. I'm going to click the gear icon again. You can see there's quite a bit of activity here. I've, I've been using this camera and it's been reading the analytic triggers. For my purpose, I want to use the line detector with human filtering that is that is on this camera to, to actually trip the alarm. So what I'm going to do, I am going to So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and turn off each one of, of these, of these other analytic triggers. I'm going to save. So that's been set up on the bridge side. We're going to ignore all of it, all other on this alerts. We're going to ignore motion. We're going to ignore field detector, radiometry, or whatever else is in that camera. Only the analytic we want to use to cause an alarm to go off. And it's important to always turn motion off because motion is too sensitive. I would just leave that for local recording on the SD card or for recording on your NVR. I would not let motion actually trigger an alarm. That would be a nightmare for your central station or for your end user with, with that amount of notification. So we'll leave it as it is. Click X. Next step, we are going to log into that camera. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna to go to my local interface of of the camera so my in this case i'm actually going to log into the nvr because it's on my local network log in close then i'm going to go to configuration this will look different for every camera you can see i'm using this this brand that i'm using looks a certain way but every camera is going to be similar, just a little different. And some of them you'll actually have to enable on this. But I'm going to go to smart events because I want the smart event. I want that human filtering. So I'll click that, let it load. And then this is the correct camera we want to adjust. You can see I've seen change off and I have intrusion disabled. What I'm going to go for is this line crossing. So my line crossing, I'll give that a few seconds. There it goes. So you can see I've already enabled this, this uh, line crossing, this A to B. So if somebody is detected by this camera going from A to B or B to A, it will trigger the alarm. And I'm looking for humans only, so I don't want any animals. And I have my sensitivity set up. I'm gonna lower my sensitivity a little bit because I have been getting squirrels on this camera. I'm gonna lower that a little bit. And then my minimum target size, I'm going to draw that. Again, I, I did say I had some issues with squirrels, so I'm going to make my minimum about that big. Try to try to ignore the squirrels coming in. When I have that detected, I have that enabled. I'll, I'll hit save. And now my analytic has been saved. So it's really important to remember when we are setting up our analytics on the cameras or using edge analytics on a camera it's all up to this camera to trigger that alarm so we have to make sure that everything is programmed correctly on the camera's side so that's what we're doing here adjusting that and setting this up so now i'm going to click i'm going to exit out of here i have my camera again i would just go to alarm i would go to on event messages click this gear icon line detector is what we want and I'm not going to change anything there, but now I have it all configured. Let's also go ahead and add this camera to my map so my operator can see that. 
Now for the next portion, what I'll do is I'm actually going to trigger an alarm by walking in front of my door or my drive or my front door camera to, to actually set this analytic trigger off. So I'm going to step outside real quick and go do that. I'll be right back. My alarm just triggered, so I'm testing it. It looks like it's working good, so I'm getting that line detector trigger to the bridge. With that human filtering, again, it should ignore small animals as I have it set up that way. And then I have my pre-recorded video. I have my live video on the left. So it looks like it's working. Now each camera is going to be a little different. Every camera has its its own local interface. So it might not look exactly the same, but the principles are the same. You want to pick the analytic trigger that you'd, you'd like to trigger the bridge and configure that correctly and then make sure the bridge is reading that analytic and only the analytic you actually wanted to trigger. Filter out the unwanted analytics like motion detection or anything else that you want to use for recording. Uh, I would also say there will be times you will have a camera that will send an analytic signal that may not be added into our library of signals yet. If you encounter that, give Check the call. They will look at it and they will do their best to add that analytic trigger within 24 to 72 hours. So give them a call on that. They can assist you with that. If you see one that comes up is not supported, which will, will happen occasionally, especially with newer cameras coming out. Uh, if you have any questions on this, please feel free to leave a comment on the video or give me a call. Thank you for watching.